Not that long ago, I couldn't care less about games. I'd been a computer repairman and all-around geek for a long time, but I never really got into the games. I played card games, and I still do. Meanwhile, daughter in the tourney got Halo for her computer. I said, that's nice, and went on about my business. But one day when I was bored, she suggested I try it. Okay, now go go over there. No, 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 over, over there. No, no, over there. Oh, oh, give me that. You see where I am today. Thanks a lot, Halo. Because of you, I'm Irving, and I have no life. And you know what? I'm okay with that. The Ballad of Irving. Irving. Big Fat Irving. Big Sport Irving. The 142nd fastest gun in the West. If you've been living on the far side of the moon for the last 30 years or so, you might not know what I'm talking about. If that's the case, I can't help you much. It does make me wonder why you're watching a game review, but that's also not my problem. Here we go. Dan, try and keep up, okay? Halo was the flagship game for Microsoft's new at the time game console known as the Xbox. The public went absolutely gaga over it. Since then, we've gotten the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One, as well as a fairly steady stream of games in the Halo series. Besides Halos 1, 2, and 3, which tell a comprehensive story, there is also ODST, which sees the war from a different perspective and has us playing as several different characters a la Call of Duty. There's Halo Reach, one of the most difficult games I've played yet. Not because of anything in the game itself, we'll get to that in due course. No, that one was difficult because I know the story and I know how it ends. And it's done well enough that the ending actually came close to bringing me to tears. Again, we'll look at that in its proper time. But now we've gotten Halo 4, which brings us back to Master Chief and continues his adventures. Uh-uh. No, I'm not doing Halo Wars. Well, actually, here's my full review of Halo Wars. No, 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 no! Halo Wars is a glitch that needs to be eradicated. Here ended the lesson. Our character goes by several names. Most commonly, he's known as Master Chief. He also goes by Spartan117, and in more candid moments, we learn that his name is John. I like that. He's a special, genetically engineered super soldier with unique armor and abilities, and reading between the lines, he's the last of his kind thanks to this war. But when we hear his given name, it's as generic an everyman as they could possibly make it. So under the right circumstances, he could be anybody, even you or me. That's brilliant because it gives the player another unconscious connection to the character and makes it that much easier to get immersed in the game world. A stroke of genius. We have four difficulty modes. Easy, Normal, Heroic, and Legendary. As you go up the difficulty ladder, the enemies get smarter and tougher, your shield and health are much weaker, and the enemies multiply so they don't spend all their time hunting down humans. Thankfully, we haven't come upon any of them in the act of multiplying. Though I'm sure there's fanfic out there that takes care of that. <laughs> Let's get on with it. One thing that's established from the very beginning is long cutscenes. Get used to them because there's a lot of them. But it's usually not a big problem, which I find fascinating. But I digress. We start on a warship that's fleeing from a major battle. We meet two of our major characters, Captain Keys and Cortana. Things are bad. Time for drastic measures. The captain says to wake their friend, and that's our cue. We get a little bit of basic tutorial, see how our energy shield works, and then head off to the bridge to report to the captain. Sir, the captain needs you on the bridge ASAP. Better follow me. You know, I'm thinking a gun would be nice right about now. We see that Master Chief and Cortana have some kind of history. Captain Keys. Good to see you, Master Chief. Things aren't going well. Cortana did her best, but we never really had a chance. A dozen Covenant superior battleships against a single Halcyon-class cruiser. With those odds, I'm content with three. Make that four kills. Sleep well? No thanks to your driving, yes. So you did miss me. 
smart, beautiful, infinitely powerful. Hey, I know she's virtual, but let's be real. If you're a guy, you've had at least one fantasy about her that you've never told anybody about. We all, I mean, most guys have. And with good reason. She is awesome. The captain lays out the plan, then hands you his pistol for your first weapon. I don't keep it loaded, son. You'll have to find ammo as you go. I'll bet Cortana would have given me one with some bullets in it. But she can't because she's inside my head now. Here's our basic plot. An army of aliens called the Covenant have destroyed humans' first settlement on another planet, a place known as Reach. We had to make a blind jump through hyperspace to try and get away from them, and they followed us. There's a big ring structure out there, and the captain is going to try and land the ship on it. Cortana is the ship's AI, and she knows way too much, so you have to kill her. No, that's not right. Your job is to keep her safe and out of Covenant hands, so let's get started. <laughs> Oh, they're so cute! Usually, if you start shooting back, they run away screaming. I almost feel sorry for them. Almost. Until they start trying to kill me to death. Further on, we get a slightly better weapon. That big thing is called an Elite. They come in all the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. You know, I wonder, if a red Elite and a blue Elite mated, would the children be purple? What was I talking about? You battle your way to a lifeboat ship, and as you go, you discover the different weapons you'll have available, your crouching and jumping controls, all that good stuff. You also find out what a health pack is and how to use it. That'll be very important as you go along. The Covenant has some nifty weapons like the plasma pistol and the plasma rifle, but their most useful item is the plasma grenade. It explodes with about the same force as a frag grenade, but there's a big difference. <laughs> If one of those sticks to you, bend over, put your head between your knees, and, you know. Once it's stuck, it cannot get unstuck. Throw, stick, kaboom. Best of all, if you stick one to a grunt, he'll run back to his squad and beg him to get it off of him, so it takes care of them, too. The grunts are definitely not the brain trust of this operation. <laughs> And why do they speak English? I guess the Covenant learned to speak English. <laughs> or not. The grunts speak English and the elites say wart, wart, wart. They do have some other phrases. I think that's my favorite. And the elites are in charge. Right. Later on, we'll meet the jackals and they really don't talk at all. They could only make chattering sounds like monkeys. Excuse me, I was going to say that. You fight your way to a life pod and the pilot takes off. Now would be a very good time to leave. Punch it. Ah, sir. Oh, good, we made it. I'm losing her. Right for impact! Chief, can you hear me? At last. Are you all right? Can you move? The others, the impact, there's nothing we can do. Or not. But there's no time to worry about that. The Covenant are on their way, looking to finish off all survivors. You deal with the squad that's coming after you, then head off to try and help some more escapees from the ship. Note to self, if you're playing in legendary mode, don't even bother trying to rescue any Marines. Their sole purpose is to draw you to where the Covenant are, then get themselves killed in the dumbest ways possible. I'm doing this one on easy, so I actually get to rescue some of these guys. This is Pelican Echo 419. Anybody reading me? Repeat. Any UNSC personnel respond. Roger, Echo 419. This is Fireteam Charlie. We read you 5x5. Five five. That UFO hammer? Roger, Fire Team Charlie. Good to hear from you. If you're not too busy, Foehammer, we could use a lift. We have survivors to transport to the command shuttle. I'm on my way. Foehammer sounds like my kind of people. Efficient, upbeat, and just a little bit goofy. I think I'd like to meet her. Making sure Mrs. Irving didn't hear that. 
and she gives you an amazing vehicle, the Warthog. Why a Warthog, sir? Because M12 LRV is too hard to say in conversation, son. The controls are pretty intuitive and the vehicle responds as well as any I've ever seen. You can really have some fun with this thing, and as often as not, when you meet Pockets of Covenant, you can just keep screaming around the area while your guys blast them. You can also do this. There's a reason why the Warthog is one of the most popular things about this game. It's incredible. This cave is not a natural formation. Someone built it, so it must lead somewhere. It's lined in cement. Do you think it's not natural? So in you go, winding here and there until you come to this. Here comes more! Take out the Covenant guarding it, and then you go look for a control to make a way through here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize this one was occupied. Now it's not. Okay, looking at that bottomless chasm, I have to wonder why we need what's basically a drawbridge in here. Why don't we just have a regular bridge? While all this is happening, Cortana's been hacking into the Covenant's communications, their battle net as she called it, and she's learned something very interesting. There's new traffic on the Covenant battle network. A lot more crew made it off the autumn than I had predicted. The captain really gave them hell. If we can find Captain Keys and the other survivors, we have a chance to coordinate an effective resistance. We exit this tunnel system and come to the next structure where some Marines are trying to hold off the Covenant. There's the life pod, but where are the Marines? No time to figure that out, it's firefight time. Those things with the shields are the jackals I mentioned, and they're a huge nuisance. For one thing, they like to do this. That's a special way of firing the plasma pistol that instantly knocks out your shield. And those stupid jackals love it. There's some marines hiding in the hills above the structure. Okay, now we know where they are. We head off to help them out, but a Covenant dropship deposits some more targets for us. It's a good thing he knows how to work that gun, because he'd starve as a comedian. Once we've dealt with them, we call in Foe Hammer and move along. Maybe they took cover in that structure. Let's check it out. More! Over here! You think? There's buttloads of Covenant here, so that means there's nothing to see, right? I love you, Cortana, but really? Haven't you ever heard of Irving's Law? Follow the bad guys! Eat it! Say hello to my little friend! He did not just say that. He did not just say that. Please tell me he did not just say that. He said it. We have no shame. Let's just get this done. We should search the interior of those structures before we leave. Um, that's what I'm doing? You're inside my noggin, so I assume you saw me go into the structure, right? Master Chief's girlfriend seems to have a talent for denoting the obvious. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes it happens because I wasn't paying attention. More often, it happens because these geniuses run right into my path and I can't stop. Like that one. Fortunately, there's no penalty for friendly fire. Or friendly running over. You know what I mean. Lucky for me, he dropped a sniper rifle. That thing they were shooting at you is called a needler. It fires these weird pink things that stick in their target, then explode. Like this. On the other hand, the best way to deal with jackals is with grenades. Once you clear the place out, you call in Foe Hammer again and head out to find the third and final life pod. Warning. I've picked up reports that the Covenant has located and secured the Pillar of Autumn's crash site. The good news is the Captain is still alive. The bad news is that the Covenant have captured the entire surviving command crew. So Captain Keys did manage to land on the ring, but now the Covenant have him and the remaining crew. File that away for later. Whoa! 
Here comes more. I see him. Random dialogue. Random dialogue. Random dialogue. Random dialogue. Random dialogue. Blarg. The elites are the drama queens of the Covenant. Oh, the awesome agony of it all! Doesn't it just break your heart? And the Oscar goes to... Not these guys. Once you take care of a bunch of Covenant, you can loot the belongings of your fallen brethren. As Foehammer comes in to pick up your survivors, Cortana gets some critical information. I found Captain Keyes. He's being held on a Covenant cruiser, the Truth and Reconciliation, a ship I disabled before we abandoned the Autumn. The Truth and Reconciliation touched down on a desert plateau roughly 300 kilometers upspin. And where exactly is upspin? What does that mean? So this time we're going with Foehammer. We're off to regroup and plan an assault on a Covenant ship. Say what? We should move out, Lieutenant, and then we'll need your help on a rescue mission. So we just leave the Warthog there? I thought she carried it attached to her Pelican. Does she not have a way to reattach it? The ship we're after is called the Truth and Reconciliation. It's apparently taking on some supplies or something like that, and we're going to take advantage of that to get on the ship and rescue the captain. No problem. So we head off to the opposite end of the plateau, where the ship is hovering about 30 meters above the ground. So how do we get inside the ship if it's in the air? The Corps issued me a rifle, not wings. There's a gravity lift that ferries troops and supplies between the ship and the surface. That's our ticket in. Isn't that convenient? So we have to clear out a bunch of Covenant in a random box canyon, then move on. Hey, I know this one! I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh lord! Okay, maybe not. Further on, you clear out a bunch more in another random box canyon, then make your way to yet another box canyon where the gravity lift actually is. You clear off the Covenant around it. Okay, you clear out those Covenant around it. Go, 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 go. Yeah, you clear out those Covenant around it. Seriously? So we clear those out? Okay, this is getting monotonous. We clear those out. Oh, come on! I was already sitting on this turret, so taking out that last wave was pretty easy. So, is that finally it? I don't see any more. Uh-oh, ominous music. Better brace yourselves, Marines! You know, by this time, the ship should be empty and we can just walk in. These things are hunters. That thing they shoot is a fuel rod cannon, and it's nasty. They're also heavily armored, and they can move deceptively fast. The best weapon for dealing with them is the sniper rifle, but only from certain angles. Since I was already there, I decided to see what the turret could do. Take one of those turrets to go, please. Foehammer brings you some reinforcements, you step on the gravity lift, and... <laughs> Inside the ship, something is odd. I've got a good lock on the Captain's CNI transponder. No Covenant defenses detected. What? There's no Covenant here. 
think maybe nobody's home. Then again, maybe we have elites with active camouflage, which is to say, invisible. There's one! Oh, contact! No, no, you had to open your mouth! You fight off several waves of Covenant coming in through various doors. At times, you can use some of those doors to get into side tunnels if you need to recharge your shield or something. This is an unbelievable battle royal. And I am not exaggerating when I say that when I played this on Legendary Mode, it took me two weeks to get past this one spot. It is absolutely staggering. Did that thing just call me an old woman? I am not old, thank you! We're further into the ship, fighting through pockets of resistance as we head toward the brig and the captain. We still have the sniper rifle and it comes in handy several times. There's just one problem. It's hard to hit anything without using the zoom, but anytime enemy fire hits you, the rifle zooms back out. This is making me dizzy. And really, there's no good reason for this. It might throw your aim off a little, but no way it should affect the scope itself because it's not hitting the scope. But you may as well get used to that happening because it's a constant pretty much through all the games. We're in a hangar at the moment and here we find another new goodie. This thing is handy, believe me. Anytime you have the chance to get one, do it. More waves of Covenant come at you while Cortana works on getting a door open so you can keep moving toward the objective. There it is! Oh. oh goody, just what we need. And as it turns out, they're part rhinoceros. Ah! This is a good time to see how the sniper rifle does. Of course, just as you finish the last enemy in the room, Cortana cracks the door code. Funny how that works. You move up a level, fight past some Covenant, and then head toward the next door. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Onward and upward. One thing you don't get to use that often is your melee ability. But when you do, you seem to be one tough customer. Fire! There's a yellow elite with an energy sword in this room. Those swords are wicked. I wonder if I can get my hands on one. That would be no. Well, that sucks. The yellow elites have tougher armor than the red and blue ones, which is why it took two sniper shots to deal with that guy. I think it's a ranking thing, but as long as they go down when I shoot them, I really don't care. On we go. Captain's transponder signal is strong. We must be close. The signal is strong in this one. We find a room with holding cells, but there's nothing of interest in them. The next bank of cells seems heavily guarded, so using Irving's Law of Video Games, we follow the bad guys and find the captain. <sighs> Coming here was reckless. You two know better than this. Thanks. Once we've got him and the other Marines out of the cells, he tells us what he's overheard. While the Covenant had us locked up in here, I overheard the guards talking about this ring world. They call it Halo. The next task is to fight our way out of this place so Chief and Cortana can find Halo's control room and hopefully keep the Covenant from taking control of it. To celebrate Halo's anniversary, the powers that be made a new version of this game, especially for the Xbox 360, with updated graphics, tinier print, all the newer stuff. In that one, the captain's speech looks a little more authentic. While the Covenant had us locked up in here, I overheard the guards talking about this ring world. They call it Halo. One moment, sir. Accessing the Covenant Battle Net. According to the data in their networks, the ring has some kind of deep religious significance. If I'm analyzing this correctly, they believe that Halo is some kind of weapon, one with vast, unimaginable power. Uh, that's true. The Covenant kept saying that whoever controls Halo controls the fate of the universe. He also got a bit uglier, but we won't talk about that. The title of this next segment sums it up nicely. Chief, you have the point. It's an ongoing problem when you're trying to get off the ship. 
Captain Keys keeps running on ahead of everybody right into the thick of the fighting and getting himself killed. Most of the time, there's nothing you can do about it because you're busy trying to keep him off your own butt. But if the captain goes down, it's mission failure back to the last checkpoint. So if you can consistently figure out which of the generic figures is him in the midst of all the chaos that ensues, try to keep the meathead alive. Yeah. Did that thing just yell s***? Did that thing just say what I think it did? No, I don't think that was it. We get back to the control room and call for evac. We made it. Cortana to Echo 419. We have the captain and need extraction on the double. Negative, Cortana. I've been engaged by Covenant Air Patrols, and I'm having a tough time shaking them. You'll be better off finding your own ride. There's always a catch. Oh, man. We're trapped in here. We're screwed, man! Really? We have a seasoned space marine doing this? Game over, man! It's game over! We know there's a firefight coming, and having him on our side is certainly reassuring. So we're off to the landing bay to commandeer a Covenant dropship. At least at the moment, we have a nav point to help us find our way through this absurd maze. It's pretty basic from here. Get to the hangar, survive a huge battle, then you get on the ship and the captain takes the helm. Captain! Hunter! Hang on. Nice one, sir! Time for a little payback. Okay, that was nice. We can't just go to the ring's control room. We have to find the silent cartographer first. It's a map that tells you where the control room is. Why you need a whole big room with tons of technical equipment to make a map of the place is never explained. I suppose it could be considered padding, but the game is so well done that it really doesn't feel like it. We land near a structure on an island and do what we do best. That's how you do it, amigo. Once the area is secure, we can go look for the cartographer. Affirmative. Echo 419 inbound. Somebody order a warthog. You know our motto. We deliver. So I guess somewhere along the way she went back to that other place and picked it up, huh? Or did they issue her another one? It makes me wonder how many warthogs she goes through in the course of a mission. Fortunately, that's not my worry. Let's go. There it is. Don't get cocky now. Who's the man? Damn it, Harry! I'm the high commander! If I say you demand, you demand! Further down the way, you find the entrance to where the cartographer should be, at least according to Cortana. And as we know, Cortana is never wrong. It's heavily guarded, but you can really have some fun dealing with it. Cover fire! Don't kill! While you're at it, there are certain things you probably don't want to do. That would be one of them. You can take the warthog inside this place, but there's really no good reason to. Don't let them lock the doors. Not gonna happen. They're going to get the door locked. If you do bring the warthog down and you do it just exactly right, you can wedge it in the door and keep it open. You have about a 1 in 21 squillion chance of doing that. I have seen it done, but I've never been able to accomplish it myself. Plan B, find a security override so we can get the door open and find the map. To do that, our first step is to squeeze our 2-pound warthog through a 1-pound space. There's a few ways you can do this. If you hit the angle just right so your left wheels go up the rocks, you can actually get the vehicle through there. Or you can get it stuck in there and toss a couple of grenades under it to try and throw it the rest of the way. But try not to kill your Marines when you do. Sometimes I've gotten past the stupid tree and have no idea how I did it. If that's how you end up, just go with it. To be totally honest, I'm not sure if you're supposed to take the Warthog up here. But I always do, partly because it makes things go faster, once you get past this tree, of course, and partly because the firepower comes in handy later. Okay, that didn't work. 
I wound up getting a little more creative than I usually do. If it works, you did it right. Let's keep moving, even though that cost me both my Marines. Sometimes I'll take the second Warthog back to the landing area and pick up a couple more Marines, but I didn't feel like it this time. At the top, of course, we meet Hunters. My weapon at the moment is a needler and it's not very effective. Beyond that, you run into a bunch of other Covenant. Since I don't have a gunner anymore, I have to get creative. This looks like the same entrance. Oh wait, guess it's not. Okay, in we go. And we have more hunters. At least the room has lots of cover and there are at least three overshields just outside. So we should be able to do this. After the hunters, you head all the way into the security override without any more resistance. That seems a little strange to me. You go in and turn off the security system and then start back out. No! That's more like it. Just before we met them, we heard a distress call from a ship going down. Cortana now tells us that ship was bringing us some heavy weapons. Translation? Portable rocket launcher, good for dealing with hunters. We salvage what we can from the downed ship, then head back toward the map room, dealing with stragglers along the way. That's the plan, yeah. This is where we came in. We've gone clear around the island, apparently. Well, not clear around, we sort of cut through the middle, but... Wait! There should be more Marines here so I can pick up a new gunner. Let's go find that map. I leave the place for five minutes and look at the riffraff that moves in. Time to try out this rocket launcher and see if it's really as good against hunters as it's supposed to be. That would be yes. Okay, let's go in. You find that you have to descend roughly 35 miles into the underground of the place, fighting tons of covenant as you go. Why is a simple map buried so deep? Whatever, just go with it. At long last, we reach the map. Analyzing. Halo's control center is located there. That structure appears to be some sort of temple or shrine, if I've interpreted this correctly. Well, that certainly clears it up. You fight your way back out, hop into Fohammer's taxi, and then it's off to the control room. Uh, Cortana, these coordinates are underground. Covenant did a thorough seismic scan, and my analysis shows that Halo is honeycombed with deep tunnels, which circle the whole ring. I hope your analysis is on the money, Cortana. This pelican won't turn on a dime. Look on the bright side, Phil Hammer. The last thing the Covenant will expect is an aerial insertion from underground. Gotta love Cortana's optimism. You fight off some guards at the door and then head in. Hey, check it out! Arrows on the floor that tell us which way to go. As if there's multiple options. Whatever, I'll take it. The grunts are definitely the comic relief here. Too bad you can't just let them run away. Covenant presence here is stronger than I anticipated. They seem to have the entire region secured. Uh, why wouldn't they? Humans didn't even know this place existed until a few minutes ago, so who else would they have to hold it against? I don't really get that statement. For some reason, you have to cross several big canyons, follow tunnels through a bunch of mountains, and ride some two-mile-high elevators to get to where the control room is. I get the feeling that whoever built this had a bunch of cement left over, looked at it, and said, Screw it, we're building something! 
The main thing that's accomplished here is the Covenant have plenty of places to oppose you effectively. From complicated rooms like that one we just saw to double-decker bridges with nice hidey holes about every six feet, this is going to take a while. Oh yeah, see that clearish flooring there? It's glass. Hit it too hard and it shatters. Shoot it and it shatters. So they built this big bridge that they know critters of some kind are going to be going back and forth on, and to make sure it's safe, they made big sections of it out of breakable glass. Like my new bulletproof shield? After you take an elevator down about 20,000 fathoms, you get to do something different. When there isn't any action happening, the grunts have a tendency to fall asleep. When they do, you can do this. The nice thing about that is it's quiet. Nobody else has been alerted to my presence yet. Through that room and we come out into a snow-covered valley. Wait, what? It was spring back at the crash site. Cortana commented on the weather patterns, but really nothing makes a lot of sense in this place. Anyway, this snow-covered valley isn't very idyllic because soldiers from a crash transport are trying to hold off a covenant assault, including their version of a tank known as a wraith. We're not doing that again. I said we're not doing that. Much better. After that, you flip a warthog and head out. I told you these things are indestructible. The ship that was carrying it is all over the ground in itty bitty pieces, but the warthog is just fine. They need to make everything out of whatever these things are made of. And there's even a couple of marines still around to hitch a ride. Lord. Looking at their health, I kind of wish the other guy was on the gun, but I don't have any say in that. Let's keep moving toward the control room. And now it's time for some real fun. Oh yeah, this should be good. That one's free. Yeah, man. Mm hmm The Covenant have at least one of their tanks, and Cortana notes how they're placed. For those tanks. The Covenant placed their tanks to defend the entrance to the tunnel. See, even Cortana understands Irving's law. You can't go wrong with an endorsement like that. Looks like that armor wasn't so tough after all. Let's mop up the rest of them. I like this tank. What the? <laughs> Two hunters with one shot. I definitely like this tank. You make your way through this tunnel, blowing stuff up and occasionally getting out to open a door. You come out onto yet another snow-covered area. Oh, excuse me. They're not canyons, they're chasms. My mistake. Naturally, the Covenant are there to meet you. Don't bother shooting at the dropship, you can't do any harm to it. That bites, but there it is. Obviously, you can do plenty of harm to the critters that come off it, and it goes away pretty quickly, so I guess that's something. You encounter a little more resistance, but the tank is definitely up to the task. You know, these Covenant guys aren't too bright. If I was in the middle of a war zone and I saw that thing coming at me, I don't think I'd stand there shooting a needler at it. I'd be running like hell the other way. In that sense, the grunts really are the smartest guys in the room, because at least they have the good sense to try and get away. Granted, they do a really bad job of it, but they try, which is more than you can say for the elites, the jackals, and the hunters. Maybe the grunts should be in charge. Somebody should bring that up to whoever's in charge of Covenant forces. You help out some more downed marines, and then it's time to leave the tank behind. Good thing there's an active camouflage here that you can pick up.
that was quite enjoyable. You battle on through and up to another open area where roughly 860 Leaven Covenant are fully prepared to prevent you from going any further. It's a really great firefight and sometimes you even get lucky with a grenade. And yes, I intend to savor that because it doesn't happen very often. After that I was able to commandeer the other ghost, but now that I look at this thing's health, I'm not sure that was such a good idea. Well, it can do that. That thing's called a Banshee, by the way. We'll need to know that later. Somehow I sort of expected that. Once you finish clearing out that area, you head into another place with arrows on the floor. You leave the Marines behind because, of course, we don't want to make this too easy. And they probably need to go back and babysit the tank until someone comes to get it, too. So they head off for evac and we head on toward more trouble. Ride another elevator up to the stratosphere, fight off some more bad guys, and we come out to yet another bridge. The design of this place makes me wonder what kind of drugs the Forerunners used and why they didn't leave some for the rest of us. Uh, there's a good chance the grunts through this door are asleep. How about we kill the music so we don't wake them up? Thank you. This isn't just a bridge like the other one. No, there are two bridges here, and there's nothing but chasm under the glass on this one. We can't get to the other one, but somehow a bunch of Covenant could. So besides dealing with the guys on our bridge, we have to deal with them shooting at us constantly. There's a bunch of elites straight ahead of me, so let's see what I can do about that. Okay, that works. On across and into another of those weird rooms. My grenade takes care of it. Who's next? Nobody here? Nobody? Really? After all those other places, this room has one guy guarding it? Looks like the Covenant are slipping a little. Or maybe they're all in here. Yikes! Hold on, that last one was behind me. How'd he get there? Well, never mind, just go. Let's keep moving. So we fight on through until we come to yet another bridge. Maybe these forerunners should have put the control room someplace that people can actually get to? This is another dual bridge, and we have hunters on the other one. How'd they get there? Some programmer put them there, duh. It really doesn't matter, we have to deal with them. Here's the hardest part of doing that. Did I hit it? It fired at me about the same time, so I had to duck and didn't see. The rocket takes a long time to get over there, so it could have moved out of the line of fire. But I can't tell at the moment, and that's the hard part. You just about have to zoom the rocket launcher to see what's going on over there, and when it's zoomed, it's as clear as orange juice. This may be difficult. Or not. I'd call that a hit, wouldn't you? One of the next rooms has even more hunters in it, but they're pretty easy to take on with the rocket launcher. Except if you do that. After you take care of them without blowing yourself up in the process, some more Covenant come through your exit door. Resistance appears to be increasing. We must be close to the control center. Wait, doesn't she already know where the control room is? Aren't we following her directions? But she has to guess that we're getting close? That's not very encouraging. Analyzing. This must be the control room. Subtle. 
The entrance to the control center is at the top of that pyramid structure. Bring me up there and I should be able to get us inside. I get why the Covenant might ascribe some religious significance to a place like this. What I don't get is why the Forerunners, the ones who actually built it, built it this way because as far as we know it didn't have any real religious significance to them. There are a couple of ways to get up there. The most common is to go on across this bridge through a zillion more tunnels and then make your way up a long ramp. That's the way I'm going to show you here. But another way, if you can pull it off, is to grab one of those banshees. Ordinarily, since you don't know what's coming, those elites jump into them and take off as soon as you come out the door, so you have to shoot them down. But if you can take out the elites before they get in the banshees, you can grab one and fly it up to the top. It saves a bunch of time, but you also miss a fair bit of gameplay. Since most of the gameplay is pretty much like what you've been doing so far, that may or may not matter to you. But it's always good to have options. So try it both ways and see what you like best. First stop, another elevator. Uh, down, but we need to go up because the control room is up there. Why? The entrance to the control center is located at the top of the pyramid. Let's get up there. Oh, I get it. Without the Banshee, we have to start out down there on the ground and make our way up, since even Master Chief couldn't jump from that bridge to the structure. We grab a ghost and start our way up. Sometimes the ghost appears to live up to its name. So why am I bringing it up here instead of just going on foot? Because I'll need the firepower later on. Or at least it'll come in handy. Plus it just beats walking. That's the biggest door we've seen yet, and it's at the very top of this thing, so it looks like we finally got there. But I'm guessing the Covenant is already there, so we make things as ready as we can, and now it's time to open the door. Yeah, that's about what I expected. I managed to hop back in my ghost, and this is where that firepower really comes in handy. You clear them all out and finally reach the goal. You all right? Never been better. You can't imagine the wealth of information. The knowledge, so much, so fast. It's glorious. So, what sort of weapon is it? What are you talking about? Let's stay focused. Halo, how do we use it against the Covenant? This ring isn't a cudgel, you barbarian. It's something else. Something much more important. The Covenant were right. This ring... It's Forerunner. Give me a second to access. Yes, the Forerunner built this place, what they called a fortress world, in order to... Wait. No, that can't be. Oh, those Covenant fools. They must have known. There must have been signs. Slow down. You're losing me. You and me both, Chief. I thought this was the end of the game. We reached the big objective, we kept the Covenant from using Halo against us. The Covenant found something, buried in this ring, something horrible, and now they're afraid. Something buried? The Captain, we've got to stop the Captain. Keys? What the are we- The weapons cache he's looking for, it's not really- We can't let him get inside. I don't understand. There's no time. Get out of here, find Keys, stop him. Before it's too late! Okay, I guess we're not done yet. Far from it, actually. Believe it or not, that's only half the game. 